This week on Maker Update, Graffiti CNC, a commitment to carbonation, a laser cut haunted house, a face detecting leaf blower, and going gaga for Halloween. Hey, I'm Donald Bell and welcome back to another Maker Update. It is my favorite time of year. The leaves are on the ground, the Halloween decorations are going up. It's magic, I love it. I hope the new season is treating you well, wherever you are. I've got a fun show for you. Let's get started with the project of the week. Over in Berlin, Nicholas Roy spent his summer making this gigantic rolling CNC wall plotter that draws with spray paint. He calls it the Graphimat, and it's the most wonderfully rickety, improvised lo-fi plotter that you've ever seen. The motors for moving the spray paint along the X and Y axes are repurposed 18 volt drills. The power for each drill is connected to its own H-Bridge driver board. But because they're dumb motors with no positional awareness, Nicholas added these encoder strips made from electrical tape. A pair of photo transistors on each axis rolls over the black and white tape to get a sense of their position. All of it is wired back to an Arduino Nano, which handles all the code. And on a breakout module, there's a separate 1.8 inch screen with an SD card reader that's used to load and preview files. If it all seems a little low budget, that's kind of the point. By making it practically disposable, you can bring this out to a location and even if you run off, you can leave this behind and not lose sleep over it. And aside from being able to paint with pre-made files, Nicholas also includes a way to control the spray paint with a serial connected joystick or using a connected computer, you could have it controlled over the internet. It looks like a lot of fun and it's one of those projects where I'm gonna bookmark this just for the trick of combining encoder strip with drill motors. More projects. Becky Stern and Ian Charnas teamed up to create an unlimited soda stream carbonation tank. What starts out as a simple question of how do you adapt a soda stream to take a 50 pound tank of carbon dioxide turns into a whole lot more. Like how do you create a scale for the tank to measure your CO2 levels or how do you safely install the tank without blowing yourself up or dying from a gas leak? And most importantly, what's a carbonated can of tomato soup taste like? It's a fun video and you just feel like you can hang out with these two all day. Following the success of last year's book nook design, Jen Schachter has a new laser cut kit available for creating this miniature haunted house. On Tested, Jen shows how the whole thing is put together, but more importantly for us, she goes back and shows how the early concept came together moving from foam core models to sketching designs in Illustrator and arriving at this wobbly, spooky, organic design. Check out our video and there's some great tips in there for concealing finger joints by integrating them into features of your design. Another project that seems appropriate for the season is this AI connected leaf blower by Jeff Gearling. No, it won't clean up your driveway, but it will selectively blast air at your enemies. Jeff shows how you can train an AI to recognize someone's face, then trigger a hardware action over GPIO, and in this case he's using a Raspberry Pi compute module to switch a relay, powering a leaf blower. It's a funny prank and he credits the code to Carolyn Dunn, who created this Raspberry Pi face mask detection project in November of last year. That's a great project in its own right and I'll link to it down in the description. In both cases, what I like is that you get to see how computer vision connects out to an external hardware action. Whether that's lighting an LED, ringing a buzzer, or engaging a relay, these are the kinds of interactions I haven't seen a lot of yet in AI projects. Finally, if you're looking for a Halloween costume with an integrated face mask, on Instructables, Natasha from TechnoChic shows you how to make a version of Lady Gaga's Matrix mask from the VMAs. She's using a series of Adafruit Dotstar 8x8 modules wired up to an itsy bitsy M4 and a small MEMS microphone. Now, you could go fancy with a 3D printed enclosure, but Natasha keeps it simple with cosplay foam, vinyl, and tape. It only has to last through Halloween, right? Now for some tips and tools. On the Cool Tools channel, I've got a video that takes a look at three different brands of deep hole markers or pattern markers. These are great for tracing shapes onto another material, especially if you have to reach through a hole or layers of machinery to make it happen. They're also just a fun, goofy looking pen to have around. In an epic 43 minute build video, Adam Savage and the tested team show how they created this outstanding Ghostbusters Proton Pack. If the length of this video scared you off, 
it's worth setting aside some time or adjusting the YouTube playback speed to make it work. It's this great team effort with Jen Schachter, Sean Charlesworth, and prop maker Ben Eady. Just to be a fly on the wall listening to the different decisions they make over the design and how they solve problems, it's a real treat. Over on the Simple Electronics channel, there's a great overview of the humblest of all stepper motors, the 28BYJ48 motor. It doesn't have much power and its cheap design doesn't lend itself to accuracy, but if you need a small, inexpensive motor with positional awareness, you're gonna wanna get familiar with these and the code used to control them. For this week's DigiKey Spotlight, do yourself a favor and check out the new series on DigiKey called Potentially Genius. In each episode, the invention team from Tomorrow Lab take an idea and create a functioning prototype in just 16 hours. In this first video, the team develops an electronic brake for an inline skate, and because each team member has their own specialty, it's a real thrill to see the product development handed off from person to person as it gets developed. Check it out. And that does it for this week's show. Be sure to subscribe, leave a thumbs up, leave a comment. Let me know which project caught your eye this week. You can also get on the Maker Update email list so you never miss a show. A big thanks to DigiKey Electronics and thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.